Hey everybody, Chris Avalon here. How y'all doing? Yes, I got another video. It's a lot of stuff that's been going on this week, so it's been compelling me, or just giving me enough to be like, okay, this is like something I really need to get to in regards of like making a video of. So yesterday, um, I woke up and you know, the first thing I do, I know is what a lot of people do and you shouldn't do it, but I do it anyway. The first thing I do when I get up, before I even wash my ass or whatever, is I check my messages in my phone and seeing what's they're doing and what's going on. I'm checking messages, emails, all the other stuff. So I happened to come across a friend of mine named Ron had posted a screenshot from someone by the name of Ashley Marie Preston, who I'm seeing like people are referring to as a trans activist. Never heard of her, but if that's what you're saying she is, then I guess that's her profession and we'll go along with it. So there was a tweet that she had posted that he had screenshot and posted on his page, which propelled me to debate this question and pose it on my page, which got a lot of conversation going, and now it's led to me making a YouTube video about it, which basically was about, it's about Pose. So now Pose is over, Pose is groundbreaking, it's got a season two, I'm happy about that, I'm grateful, like I've been doing all my little um, Pose review um on, on, you know, on the show, and I love the show. I'm looking forward to the second season where we're going to go with a lot of the characters. But the trans activist, Ashley, went and asked the following. And it's being critical of the one and only RuPaul. So that's why I wanted to make the video about it. So basically, she says is this. The fact that America is raving about Pose on FX networks and RuPaul hasn't uttered one word, nor has he let a single thought escape from under that tattered wig, confirms that the trans community already knew. Well, confirms what the trans community already knew. Folks are going to be hot over this tweet, but a truth is a truth. Now, when I was reading on the blog, they said, oh, well, you were just looking for attention, da da da, so on and so forth. Um... But yeah, sometimes, you know, when you say things that are out of character, outside the box, to be a little controversial, it's going to spark something. So yeah, people are going to be hot over it because you said something. You're criticizing someone who is one of the most famous drag queens in the world. Not just the United States, but worldwide. Like, everybody in, in other countries know who the fuck RuPaul is. But is there merit to what Ashley is saying? And... I had to literally take a day and let it all register because I had a lot of stuff going on. I was doing other YouTube videos. There's a lot of stuff that's going on in entertainment news that I've been compiling, especially for my radio show, which comes on every Saturday, alldigitalradio.com from 2 to 4. It's a live show, all digital, blah, alldigitalradio.com. So if you want to listen to me live and stuff, you can definitely download the app. I know I'm promoting, but whatever. That's what I do. Um, you can download the app at the Google Play Store. And yeah, download it. Just look up All Digital Radio. It should pop up. You'll be able to listen to me live from two to four. I have about, I'm trying to think, maybe three more um, episodes, two more episodes to go before I wrap up the season. But anyway, let's just get back to what's more important. That's important, but let's get back to this. Let's just stay with the topic. So um, it was posted on Facebook. She screenshotted it, posted it on Facebook. A friend of mine posted it, and then I posted it. And then it was, I like the I, what I liked about it was there were debates on all different sides. So, do, is there merit to what she's saying about RuPaul? Now, here's the thing. Um, RuPaul, I feel in so many ways, it's a damn if he does and damn if he doesn't situation. Like I get that he has incorporated a lot of the ballroom scene, even though he technically is not part of the ballroom scene. He Rupo came up in more of the club kid era. Michelle Visage came up in the ballroom scene. They've kind of collided in so many ways, became friends that way, and they've been able to spin off a, a spin off a friendship, not only personally but professionally, for the many years. Because I've listened, I've been a fan of RuPaul, of course, since Supermodel, but I've also followed his talk show on VH1. I've listened, used to listen to his radio show when it was on WKTU in New York back in the days in the mornings. Like it was hard for me to get ready for school because the RuPaul radio show was on, and my mother was always like, "Bitch, if you don't get your ass together." Um, but yeah, I was so enamored because it's like we had a black gay man who was such a pioneer in our community who has contributed so much to our to the mainstream. So while on one hand I do get it that I could see why the trans community would be upset and would want him to say something. Um, because, you know, of him incorporating a lot of the ballroom scene in RuPaul's drag race. I don't feel that RuPaul is 110% obligated to do anything. Now, 
he is busy. I'll say that. He just wrapped season 11 of RuPaul's Drag Race. That was done maybe about two, three weeks ago. Um, I'm hearing that he is working on All Stars um, currently. He also has a show in the works um, with J.J. Abrams that they're executive producing that's loosely based on his life coming up in the club scene. Um, I don't know. I don't think he's going to be starring in it, but it's, he's going to be a consultant, executive producer, that sort of thing. He is doing a show for Netflix where he's going to be a traveling drag queen with a little kid and that sort of thing. So it's probably going to be like Auntie, the Auntie Mame of drag type shows. Um, so he's relative. And then on top of that, he's just filmed a pilot for a daytime talk show that may or may not get picked up. So Rue is very busy. Would it be good if he tweeted his thing? I know a lot of people say, well, why would he tweet? Because it's on different networks. I don't think that matters. Like, if I was working, if I had a deal with VH1 and there was a show on another network that I liked, why wouldn't I give it, like, why wouldn't I say it's a good show or this, that, and the other? Um, there have been people who aren't part of networks that like that will give their props to shows like Grace and Frankie or, you know, any other show that comes on. And, and or, um, what was this? I'm trying to think of a broad city. Like he had the broad city girls on drag race. That's not on the same network, but wait a minute. I'm trying to wonder, is that Viacom? Cause I think broad city is probably comes on a Viacom network. So that would make sense if I'm trying to remember, I think it was, a, I think it's comedy central comedy central, I believe is part of Viacom. So yeah, so I can understand that family of, Oh, you're picking people from the same type of, but then Trying to think, well, Tamar Braxton was on the show too. So is We TV part of Viacom? I don't know. I have to keep track. I used to be, I used to be a, 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 a when I was in film school, like I worked at Viacom. So, well, I worked at VH1 to be exact, the li- the the live department, live music and television department. So, um, trying to keep track of all the Viacom based networks is a lot. They they own a lot of shit. So, um. She also went on to say, just to, con- to conclude, maybe this will help. Um, she also wrote, I'm not going to go through a million comments and explain. Say, so here is the arc of what makes Rue problematic. RuPaul built an empire off of a subculture of the LGBTQ community established by the trans community and members of the ballroom scene. I only, I could only assume for fear of having to give credit to the rightful pioneers, Rue has went out of the way to deflect from that truth and even discredit the contributions trans people have made. Rue has needed his wig snatch for a long time now. Many of us have tried to f- have peaceful dialogue and come to Jesus moments. The reality is that Rue co-opted a scene and made it palatable for, um, or palatable, if you want to say it that way, for white gays, called it something different and refuses to acknowledge the rich history of that which he claims to have branded. So, I know a lot of people are aware that a lot of the quotes from RuPaul's Drag Race comes from Paris is Burning. But to kind of see where she's coming from with this comment. I remember one time readings, I don't remember exactly where, I don't know if it was an interview that Rue did or whatever the case was, but I do remember there was one time where someone was reading a comment or, and I was reading the comment section or something and they implied there was like, I had no idea a lot of the quotes from RuPaul's Drag Race was from Paris is Burning until one day I watched the documentary and I started noticing a lot of the quotes were very similar. And it's like, yes, so while People do look to television as a wherewithal of learning things because a lot of people don't read. Like, it's sad, but it's the truth. A lot of people don't crack open a book anymore and read. A lot of people get their information from the internet and television. And sad to say, but that is what it is. So I feel like there is responsibility when you do certain shows where you're trying to open the minds of people and you're trying to educate and do all this stuff, which is what RuPaul's Drag Race does do at times. It does kind of give a little bit of that drag history or LG or queer history if you want to call it that um on television because a lot of kids aren't learning things from by going to a museum or learning about the stonewall riots they're learning this from the televisions and all the case of what that is so while i do understand where she's coming from but i feel like it's not rue's obligation to have to be the end-all be-all spokesperson for all things lgbtq even though the mainstream media, who I feel at times can be problematic, likes to put that energy on one person. Being an example, if you look at hip hop now, especially of the female persuasion, when I was coming up, there were many different women who were making music at the same time, and it was all love, for the most part. 
Like you had Little Kim, you had Foxy Brown, um, you had Eve, you had Missy Elliott, you had Queen Pin, you had so many of these different girls that were coming up that was making music and doing their own thing. And it was like I said, it was all love for the, for you know certain situations. Like Eve will tell you her stories. Won't mention who about the shade she's gotten from rappers when she was first coming up. We all know publicly about Little Kim and Foxy Brown's be- legendary beef back in the nineties. But now when you look at it, it's sort of oh, we can only have Nicki Minaj or. Now, we can only have Cardi B. You can't be fans of Cardi B and Nicki. So, it's the same thing I look at it with the gay thing, with the gay situation. Gay thing, gay situation. Um, Where the only person it seems like they want to be the end-all, be-all of all things LGBTQ is RuPaul. And I get why a lot of people are, are upset because of things that RuPaul has said in the past. Like, um, and you know, I had to make sure I had all my T's and shit together. Is that remember when Ru did the Guardian interview? What was it like? Maybe earlier this year, about January, December, January, around the time. I don't remember because the lines blur. Like, we didn't even get a break from All Stars three before we went into season ten of Drag Race, um, where he basically sparked backlash when. Um, He was asked, would he ever have full transgender women compete on Drag Race? Like, would you have a trans woman compete on Drag Race and not just drag queens? And he was like, probably not. And it made an implication where he was trying to compare um, trans women to people who have had their body parts augmented, like Detox and Trinity Taylor. Just using those two as an example. Whereas... You look at them and they're pumped full of silicone. Like they've got silicone in their ass and their cheeks and their chest and their face. All kinds of shit. They got all this fake shit up in their body compared to a trans woman who feels in her whole heart of heart. But that's a whole nother conversation because I've also said that when it comes to trans women, like I don't understand why a trans woman talking about doing drag when in fact drag is the illusion of a man who likes to dress up as a woman and does it as a profession. Whereas trans people don't even consider themselves to be drag. They, they, like I know trans women that will get deeply offended if you call them drag queens. So... You can't, I don't see how, I don't understand how can you perform as a drag queen, but you don't consider yourself a drag queen, you're trans. So I think like maybe because I understand the T in the LGBT is starting to gain a voice. They're starting to get out there and we're starting to learn more about them and they're still relatively fresh. I feel like maybe the trans community needs to figure out where they fit in this world because they, I have to agree, they have been marginalized, they've been ostracized. They've kind of been ignored by the rest of us. Like, the gays don't really pay too much attention to the trans girls, even though I do have a lot of transgender friends and I love my trans girls. Um, a lot of gay men don't like to associate themselves with that because gay men, a lot of, in a lot of ways, when it comes to being in our establishments, can be a bit anti-woman. So, um, it, that's a whole other conversation. That's a whole other thing, like, to unpack. And, um, and I want to just kind of stick on this. But I'm just throwing things out there so that way some people who aren't familiar with what's going on in our community is aware of the fruits of our labor and the things that we deal with. But, um, yeah, so he apologized after people roasted him and stuff for all of that. But I'm like, you know what? If Rue doesn't want to have trans women on his talk, on his reality show, then that's his prerogative. I would love to see a show like America's Next Top Model in that vein. And Project on you could throw that in. But with a bunch of trans women. I would love to see a modeling show about trans, you know, about trans people. We had one, um, I think it was an Oxygen, Strut. I love that show. That's where Dominique, the show she was on before she came to Pose. Her late Ashley, Arise, um, Isis, who was on America's Next Top Model, they all were on that show. And I liked the show. But apparently, I guess the network didn't pick it up because Dominique's off doing other things. So, um, while I get where the activist is coming from, and the funny thing is, I should also point out, India Moore from um, Pose actually liked the tweet. So I guess she feels what Ashley is feeling. So um, while I get where she's coming from, I feel like what we need to focus on is let's not focus on RuPaul and his thoughts on the show. I know Michelle Visage has tweeted her love for the show. But... Um, we shouldn't be worrying about, well, what's RuPaul thinking? Because you know what? RuPaul's given his thoughts and people roasted him for it. RuPaul stays silent and people are roasting him for it. So you can't win for losing in a lot of situations. And I feel like the trans community needs to figure out where you guys fit 
and fight the right battles. I think this is a bullshit situation. Like, it's not something we need to put so much attention and energy into about what what's RuPaul's opinion about Pose. I mean, I don't think that his his love for the show or dislike for the show is going to raise the ratings. I feel like what has helped this show get a second season is the fact that people such as myself and so many others have talked about it. I have promoted the hell out of Pose, be it on Twitter, on Facebook. I have talked so much of this show that I've had literally people come up and hit me up on Facebook and say, thank you for telling me about this show. I didn't know anything about this show. Based off your recommendation, I checked it out. And I absolutely love it. I love the show. I can't live without the show. I can't wait for season two. This show is so good. It's so amazing. Like, and that warms my heart more than anything that I can that I can interest. And that's always been something I've been I've loved to do since I was a kid. Is that I've always loved introducing people to music. Like if I'm passionate about music or a movie or a TV show, whatever the case is, I'm always I've always even before there was social media. I was always telling people, recommending and telling them this, that, and the third. And they would listen, they would like, and they would be like, oh, yeah, thank you. Like, I've always been good at recommending stuff. So that's always the thing that brings joy to me is, like, if I've discovered an undiscovered gem and I kind of just let people know about it and then they tell me their thoughts and their feelings, then they go off and they're like, oh, my God, I loved it. Thank you so much for telling me. So I've managed to turn on lots of people to pose. And I think that's what we should celebrate. We should celebrate that we've made a milestone in the community that we have a show about people of color who are gay and transgender who are on TV telling our stories, getting roles, and we have another year where we have five trans women who are going to be employed in Hollywood. So we should we should applaud that. We should respect that. We should also love and respect that we have a lot of trans people, a lot of gay people who work behind the scenes that have another job for another year. That's what we should be applauding. Not the fact on what RuPaul is thinking about in regards of a TV show. So what we'll do is hopefully Pose will end up on Netflix so that way more people can get turned on because I know there's people out there who don't have FX, who don't have a way of watching the show. So I'm because I noticed like a lot of FX programs have ended up on Netflix. So hopefully it's on Netflix. It'll end up there. People can sit and binge watch it. It's eight episodes, and um, they'll be able to chime in and give their opinions and be able to see the show and love the show. And then when season two comes around. It's got a bigger audience. So that's what we need to do. Just keep letting people know about Pose. Keep showing our love. And just keep, I think as a people, we need to start, we need to just open up those doors and support our own programs. And then hopefully, and what I'm hoping is also is that Pose will open the door for more shows to come out to tell queer stories, especially queer people of color. Like, that's what we need. We're... While it's great to see that we get to see so many gay people on different shows, and it's great that white people, y'all still got a ways to to get your stories told, a lot of us folks of color don't really have that opportunity and don't have those. So I'm glad that we're starting to gain that traction and we have more shows. Speaking of which, I hope they bring Noah's Art back. I miss that damn show. I love that show. So, yeah, I think that's all I pretty much have to say about it. So... While I get where people are coming from, I guess that's more so why I get where people are coming from with the whole thing with RuPaul, um, I'm not that upset about it. I was kind of yesterday because I think I was just vibing off the energy of everybody else and I was just kind of like just gravitating towards what everybody else's thoughts was instead of coming to my own conclusion. But now that I actually had the time to sit and unpack and settle on my own thoughts, now I feel... Yeah, I just I just feel like I, I was I, that after I let it marinate, it just gives me an ability to feel and believe what I want to believe, and not get wrapped up in everybody else's opinion. Because you know some people just love getting riled up with bullshit, and so I'm okay with it, and it's all good. So anyway, thank you all for watching. Um, I also want to thank a lot of people who have reached out to me in a lot of situations. Like this has been a rough week for me, especially dealing with depression and, and anxiety and all that other stuff. So I've been just dealing with a lot, and doing these videos have actually been helping me um, deal with a lot of stuff that's been going on in my mind. Depression is real, anxiety is real. Just with this idiot in the White House and so much shit going on, it's just a lot. So. What are your thoughts on this whole situation, on um, what's going on with uh, RuPaul and, and Pose? Do you think Ru should speak out on what's going on with the whole Pose situation? Is it not a big deal? What's your thoughts on it? I definitely want to hear what you guys have to say.
So definitely leave a comment in the bottom right below these video and YouTube, Facebook, wherever, because, you know, I'm always sharing it everywhere. So, yes, the, for those of you who are following and watching, thank you once again for taking the time to watch this episode. Leave your comments, like, subscribe for newbies if you want to, if you want to like, subscribe, click the bell so that way you get the notifications, all that good stuff. Love you all for watching. Until next time, love you all.